This presentation is part of a lecture series on multi-resolution signal and geometry processing by Michael Adams at the University of Victoria in Victoria, Canada. For those of you who might be interested, a copy of the slides for this lecture series, as well as the corresponding textbook, can be downloaded from the website whose URL is given on this slide, in particular this URL here. In this part of the presentation, I'm going to give an introduction to the Open Graphics Library, which is better known by the name OpenGL. So what exactly is OpenGL? OpenGL is an application programming interface for high-performance, high-quality 2D and 3D graphics. It's a de facto standard in industry. It's supported by all major vendors. There's bindings for this library for numerous programming languages, including C, Java, and Fortran. In this presentation, I'll be focusing exclusively on the language binding for C. The library is Windows system and operating system independent. In other words, it doesn't rely on you having to use a particular windowing system or a particular operating system. It's available on all mainstream, syst mainstream systems, including Microsoft Windows-based systems and Linux and Unix-based systems. It's vendor neutral and controlled by an independent consortium. And the, this consortium includes a lot of companies that you would expect to be involved in OpenGL. Companies like NVIDIA, Intel, AMD, the, the major GPU makers. The official website for OpenGL is what's listed on the slide here. There's a lot of very useful resources on OpenGL at this website, so I highly recommend that you take a look at it at some point. And lastly, I just want to mention that there's a, a reduced complexity version of OpenGL available for use on embedded systems called OpenGL ES. I won't be talking about OpenGL ES in this talk. However, if you're familiar with just ordinary OpenGL, OpenGL ES will be much easier to learn. OpenGL is a fairly large library. It's comprised of several hundred functions, and it supports a number of very basic geometric primitives, including points, lines, polygons, images, and bitmaps. And essentially what OpenGL allows you to do is arrange these geometric primitives in three-dimensional space, and then select a desired vantage point for viewing the scene that you've composed out of these geometric primitives. It takes care of a lot of the issues associated with rendering, like calculating the colors of objects, either by explicit assignment or through lighting calculations or through texture mapping or some combination of these things. It converts the mathematical description of the objects to pixels on the screen. In other words, it takes care of rasterization. It can also eliminate hidden parts of objects by applying a technique known as depth buffering or Z buffering. It can perform anti-aliasing and, and so on. But one thing that's important to understand about OpenGL is it's only concerned with rendering, not anything else. So for example, it, it has no window management capabilities. You can't use OpenGL to create windows, destroy windows. All it does is render. Also, OpenGL has no mechanism for obtaining user input. For example, using a mouse or a keyboard or a trackball or some such device. So for this reason, since there is no window management capabilities or input capabilities, for example, with OpenGL, typically another library has to be used in conjunction with OpenGL in order to manage windows, manage user input, and so on. And the particular helper library that I'm going to discuss in, in the case of uh, this particular presentation is called GLUT, the OpenGL Utility Toolkit. <laughs> 